Howdy y'all, this is another video in the Ask an American series and it's a question I get from Europeans but I do get it from some Americans too which has always struck me as a little strange uh, why Americans would ask these types of questions but I understand why Europeans do. Now if you recall some while back I made a video response to Noah Plum he had made a video asking um, Americans about, you know, uh, about our gun rights and then after I made that video and other people made video responses to him too he made another video asking the gun control side, why do you like gun control? And in that video, towards the end, he crystallizes the, the question I alluded to earlier, so I'm just going to let him uh, ask it. ...of guns or place certain restrictions. And so I can understand, I can understand that if you feel, if you genuinely feel that what is being done is detracting from the Second Amendment, is, is, is uh, in opposition to what it says, what, what rights you have guaranteed by the Second Amendment, then I can understand that position. I got that. I understood that strength of feeling. It was made uh, very forcefully by some people, politely but forcefully, and I got that one. The bit that I didn't get, I still don't get this fucking tyranny thing. I still don't get this fear of tyranny. If you're in a... I mean, no country has a greater... A commitment to democracy than the United States. It kind of seeps out of the pores of Americans, and yet it seems strange that at the same time you have this great fear of, I don't know, reds under the bed, or that some kind of totalitarian fascist dictator is going to come along and remove all your democratic rights all of a sudden. I, I can't see anything less likely than that to happen. Um, I think I said to just kind of comment to him on his video, you see more like the order of the zombie apocalypse. Now there's a better reason for keeping your guns than that happening in the United States. And I kind of see the same in our country, even though we haven't got a constitution. Uh, he's talking about England, which is apparently a country or something. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so the, the question there is, is really... What are you guys in America so worried about? I mean, no one's more devoted to democracy than, than you folks, notwithstanding the fact that we've overthrown democracies around the world, but putting that off to the side. Uh, so why, why this big fear? Another way it's been put um, is that you think that you're so much better than, than the, the Nazis were because of all your freedoms and democracy, and yet you're worried that you're exactly like the Nazis. Different variations on a theme, but the same kind of thing. This would be a bit like... Um, someone going around and noticing that we vaccinate in the United States and they go oh my god look we don't have a problem with smallpox we don't have a problem with you know, this disease or that disease you've got this under control you know all these things have been dealt with these are relics of the past uh, so why are why do you guys vaccinate why are you still vaccinating what's up with that shit and it's just a, a failure to appreciate that pre uh, the prevention of the problem is uh, is, is what you're seeing working because the problem isn't here. The, it's not that uh, the American people, the individual people, are uh, better than any other people. We're not fundamentally different from Germans. We're not fundamentally different from the British. We're not fundamentally different from other peoples throughout all of history. The distinction between the United States' way of doing things and the rest of the world is that we recognize the cruel and plain fact that we can be just as evil as any other group of people throughout the world. And when you say that um, no one loves democracy more than the United States, there's a bit of a confusion here in concepts. Now, in, in a previous video, uh, or maybe in the, even in the same video, Noah Plum was talking about how you have to be kind of an anti-democratic you know, asshole to kind of want to say, well, fuck what you people want. Uh, we want our gun rights. Go away. Yes, you do. The, the whole notion of rights is anti-democratic. Um, Justice Jackson, one of the best writers in American history, and, and uh, one of our best judicial writers, certainly, if not the best, he, he's up there with Justice Scalia, in my mind, and, uh, and, and the ability to write. He has a great uh, stylist. Anyway, he writes in a case, West, West Virginia Board of Education against Barnett. Um, and this is a, a case where the, the schools, the uh, law and passed or whatever, requiring students in schools to stand up and, I think, salute the flag. Uh, anyway, so uh, Justice Jackson writes for the court. 
The very purpose of a Bill of Rights was to withdraw certain subjects from the vicissitudes of political controversy, to place them beyond the reach of majorities and officials, and to establish them as legal principles to be applied by the courts. One's uh, right to life, liberty and property, to free speech, a free press, freedom of worship and assembly, and other fundamental rights may not be submitted to vote. They depend on the outcome of no elections. In short, this distinction of, uh, or this, this um, exposition of the American way of doing things is to, to point up the fact that we are a republic that has democratic principles. We're not a pure democracy. And this, uh, this reservation of certain rights that withstand the, 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 the want of the majority's will, the want of you know, whatever people want to vote for, is really, it can really serve as the whole distinction between a democracy and an oclocracy, an oclocracy, I guess it is, which is mob rule. Both are majoritarian systems, but one is a majoritarian system that uh, has as one of its objects justice, uh, one of its objects the, the right way of doing things as opposed to uh, an oclocracy, which is just whatever the majority wants, the majority gets, no matter how shitty it is. I mean, if, if the mafia ruled, or if the Germans ruled, um, you know, and everybody became one of those, you would have a majoritarian rule, they would vote on things, but it would not be a particularly just system. The United States is not first and foremost uh, wedded to the idea of, demo of democracy. They're first and foremost, we are first and foremost wedded to the idea of liberty. Now, if you, most people, particularly outside of the United States, don't read our Declaration of Independence. Uh, many Americans don't. But anyway, uh, Jefferson wrote before it was uh, edited uh, and then put into the form we have it now. He wrote in there um, about slavery and how slavery needed to go the way of the dodo, even though he didn't say the way of the dodo at the time for obvious reasons because there was a fundamental disconnect between the principles of the American Revolution and the reality of American life for black people, who were, you know, people. So anyway, um, Jefferson writes, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. This is the, this is the, distinct, this is the resistance to uh, democratic uh, imposition of, on various topics. Anyway, with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed, and this is a, to address the the view that Americans are, uh, in some sense, uh, hypocritical because of um, our, our principles and the fact that we talk about the right of the people to slaughter their government, essentially, and that there's some disconnect there. There's no disconnect at all. Um, it, it's essentially this, that uh, there is an encroachment here on the right, and we're not rising up and killing people, so clearly we're pussies or we're hypocrites or something along those lines. Uh, these people don't read history. They don't read our our founding documents or the history of this country or anything like that. And uh, they sound stupid when they say this, but they say it quite often. Anyway, Jefferson continues in the Declaration of Independence. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light or transient causes. In other words, not every misstep of a government is a reason to have a revolution. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. And uh, if you read the Constitution, it starts off, every school child, every public school child, at least in the United States, uh, has to memorize this for a little while. Uh, we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, welfare and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Um, so yes, we like our democracy within certain constraints. 
What are those constraints? Those are the, the rights that we have enshrined in the Constitution. Whether they should have been put there or not is, uh, is a very curious discussion. Alexander Hamilton was practically uh, psychic in predicting the calamities of the future that would befall the country if we wrote a Bill of Rights, because there's no reason to write a Bill of Rights that restrains powers that no government had been granted. No government had been granted, uh, the federal government had not been granted the power to establish a, an official religion. It had not been granted the power to uh, you know, censor the press. It, it had not been given uh, the power to, uh, people did not consent to the power uh, for it to take away the arms of the people. They did not consent to having troops quartered in their homes. They did not uh, consent, the, the federal government was not given the power to hold trials without juries. It wasn't given the power uh, to abolish trials or any, all these, all the, to prevent someone from having a lawyer. All these things that uh, nowhere in the Constitution does it anywhere purport to grant the power to the government. It, so you don't need to go writing things that say the government shall not do what it was not given a power to do. Clearly, if it has no power to act, and uh, the way that you know this is you look at Article 1, Section 8, which is a, 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 uh, an enumerated list of the exhaustive set of powers of the, of the federal government. So you look on that list and you say, oh, this thing that you're doing ain't on the list, and then that is a tyranny. And you go, oh, no, stop. Now, of course, there's always a give and take in a democratic society. You know, the, the, I want the line to be drawn here on this particular issue. You want it to be drawn here. Another group would want it to be drawn there or here or wherever it is. And there's you know, so-called play in the joints. And uh, so long as you know you're you're in that system, playing in, you know, dealing with the play that is in the joints, the the wiggle room that's in there, you can suffer some inconveniences on your liberty, some minor tyrannies here and there. <clears throat> um, it's just a pragmatic issue. The, the, um, I, I've talked about the Battle of Athens. The fact that um, a sheriff there shot a voter would not be a reason for the entire country to take up arms and throw off all the governments and all the land because that is a minor problem and it's local there. The fact that years before that there had been some corruption was not a reason as a pragmatic uh, issue for people of that, that town to take up arms and start uh, shooting their government officials. You try to work it through the democratic process. You try to resolve these through debate, through peace. Uh, the, the whole of the, the American system is a way for us to try to avoid devolving into the types of tyranny uh, and large-scale you know, letting of blood that, that is uh, littered the, the history of our, of, our, <laughs> of our bloody species. It is a way to address that without that being the recourse. But nevertheless, saying that there are finite lines, there are clear boundaries beyond which if the government goes and does not reverse its course, then the outcome, uh, the, the, the pragmatic going along with it goes away and the principle is you just have to die, government. You have to go away. So it, it's that kind of notion. So yes, we like our democracy so long as it's within the constraints of the liberties of the American people. Um, the, so to, to respond to the, you have to be kind of a, a democracy-hating asshole to insist on these liberties. If, if that's the distinction you want to draw, you're right. Uh, to the extent that people want to vote, vote away the rights of the American citizens, you're right. I'm very much anti-democratic. That's what the Bill of Rights is. Now, Justice Scalia's talked about this, Justice Jackson's talked about it, any, any person who reads history will recognize immediately that that is the whole of what a right is. It is the ability of the individual person to look at all the rest of the country and say, fuck you, these are my rights, you don't get to tread on them. And other people, even who don't agree with that particular person's position, uh, say free speech or whatever it is, pick, you know, pick your, uh, your right of choice, will stand up alongside that person with the same underlying threat of violence. You know, look, uh, we're going to defend this liberty. Uh, whether we do it at the ballot box or we do it at, the, at gunpoint, it will, this will be resolved. Uh, so you take people who have the most uh, obnoxious positions. Nevertheless, the American people say, we will protect this extraordinarily unpleasant person, this extremely obnoxious group, the Westboro Baptist Church, for example, and we say, whatever they want to say, it's their right to say it. We disagree uh, vehemently with everything they said, and I hope you get hit by a, a car on the way home, you get in a wreck and your whole family dies, but the one thing that will not happen, that may not happen, that must not happen, is that the government be thought to have some power to come in and tell you, that's wrong thing, you need to change your opinion, or else. 
And uh, so it, it is, there was a case here called Snyder against Phelps. Um, these Westboro Baptist Church people protested the, the funeral of uh, a dead Marine. Absolutely obnoxious. They put out a video, some, what they called an epic, and well, you've seen the signs. You know how these people operate. I guess I don't have to explain it. And uh, so um, the Snyder family decided to sue the Phelps family uh, for emotional distress. And I resent the fact that the, the, Phelp fam the Phelps family was given a day in the Supreme Court where they themselves, because they are all, well, most of them are lawyers, lawyers, so they walked in and argued their own case. So they got to use the, the emotional anguish of the, uh, the Snyder family to stand in the Supreme Court to have a half an hour to lecture uh, us about how shitty the country is and how it is their right to stand up and, and give the opposite view to the God loves America or God bless America view, you know, the one that most Americans have, and, and give the God hates America view, the God damn America view. And uh, that these people got to spew that nonsense in the Supreme Court. They got status in the best form that you can possibly have in, 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 in our legal system. In the Supreme Court to lecture the justices of the Supreme Court have to sit there and just listen to this nonsense. And then at the end of that, have to turn around and go, and they're right. The First Amendment, definitely, if it means anything, it is the right of these shitty douchebags to stand and lecture people on, on all of these horrible things. The only dissenting justice is Justice Alito, because Justice Alito is not really big on the law. I mean, he's the one justice who sat in a, uh, um, a I think it was a, uh, was it Randolph or Fernandez? Anyway, maybe it was Fernandez against California. And anyway, Jeffrey Fisher was arguing the case that the previous uh, president of the court was thus and such. And Justice Alito's response was, well, I wasn't on the court at that time. Why should I feel like I'm bound by that decision? You know, which betrays really his judicial philosophy of, I'm going to do what I want to do and precedent the law be damned. If, uh, if I can find a way to work in my personal prejudices or my personal opinion into the law, I'm going to do that. He's, he's <laughs> apparently unabashedly of that view, having said it actually in, in, so, in so many words in the Supreme Court. That is... That is dangerous. Now, of course, he occasionally writes opinions that I like. For example, he wrote a good um, opinion in a per curiam decision uh, the other day about uh, the Second Amendment. This, by the way, for people who um, are of the view that you can just use a taser or pepper spray in lieu of, of a firearm, Massachusetts made sure that you could not do that by outlawing stun guns, tasers, uh, categorically, except for the police. The police got them, but you, you couldn't. So this woman had an abusive boyfriend. Apparently he beat the shit out of her, uh, threw her out of, out of their home, whatever it was. And a friend of hers gave her a stun gun to protect herself in case something else happened. Well, something else did happen. She used it. Uh, and in, anyway, the long and the short of it is, is she's arrested for having a prohibited weapon. She's convicted. It goes up to the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court. And, uh, and they write an opinion saying that um, stun guns were not in common use at the time of the founding, and therefore they're not protected by the Second Amendment. The Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court gets the case, summarily reverses it in, in a per curiam opinion, which means they don't hear any oral argument, they don't take testimony, uh, that no one goes in and argues a case, they read the record, and, uh, and then they summarily write a decision saying, no, you're wrong, you're, you're just that wrong, you don't need to have any argument on this, you're just that retarded uh, uh, inferior court. And a leader writes a, an opinion concurring in the outcome and saying that um, that this was a begrudging procurium and all these other things. And he's talking about the, uh, if you read District of Columbia against Heller, it expressly rejected this, this notion that uh, the only things that are protected are the guns that existed at the time of the founding. It is not. It's the ones that are in common use in the society as it is at the moment. And in any event... Uh, he seized upon a peculiarity in the Supreme Judicial Court's opinion in this particular con uh, case, in this conviction. And it was that if the, if the woman had really wanted to defend herself, what she should have done, or what she could have done, was have gone out and gotten a firearm and used that to protect herself against her, uh, this man uh, who wanted to beat her 4 foot 11 or 5 foot tall frame. Uh, that she could have gotten a firearm and used that to defend herself against the father of her children. And Alito writes a pithy uh, little, little line quip there saying, 
I don't think the government should be in the business of advising people that they should engage in deadly force when <laughs> they're not comfortable engaging in deadly force. I don't think it's the I don't think the government should go around advising mothers that instead of using a stun gun against the uh, the father of their children when he turns abusive, that really their options are to just get beaten until he's tired of beating them or to kill him. I, I don't think <laughs> I don't think that's a, a choice for the government to put to people. So anyway, uh, so he does write some opinions that I like. Yeah, I think he's he is an absolutely terrible justice because of that that talking to Jeffrey Fisher and that one loose moment betrays a philosophy that is that is uh, dangerous. The whole why should I feel myself bound by the law was what the question is, and Jeffrey Fisher, get, said, <coughs> uh, you know, he, he kind of gave a, a half chuckle like I can't believe I'm hearing this. He goes uh, because it's the law; it's a decision of this court. And no one is arguing that that the law should be free, should be changed. I mean, what a strange question for a judge to ask. Why should I feel myself you know, bound by the law? Anyway, so the the uh, the whole notion of the United States being wed to liberty, not so much democracy. Democracy, so long as it serves liberty. But if there's a contest, democracy falls and liberty prevail, prevails in the in the fullness of time, or at least hopefully. In any event, so you look around and you say, you're so wedded to this, why are you so worried that you will become like the Nazis or like the, insert bad group here? It's because we have the same human nature as the Nazis as anybody else. And one of the greatest things that, that can ever befall a society is hubris. That you're too good, you're too moral, you're too perfect, you're too great and wonderful to be prey to all the other uh, moral problems that have afflicted other peoples. Now, people will say this, ask this question of, of an American, or ask, even Americans will ask this, what are you worried about? I mean, my God, we're the United States of America. These are people who forget the better lessons of history, in Judge Kaczynski's words. When the Declaration of Independence, from which I read earlier, wonderful words, beautiful words, wonderful ideals, uh, when those words were put on page, we held millions of people in slavery. That was a problem that sat uh, undisturbed for the next uh, four and a half generations, and then that led to our bloodiest war, the Civil War. Uh, and then after that, the lot of blacks did not improve dramatically because it was kind of a wink and a nod. We've got this on paper, it's written fact, but we're not really interested in spending a lot of resources in rectifying the situation. We are not immune from the same blind spots, the same uh, capacity to devolve into evil as any other, other group is. It is these rights that we place in there to be a bulwark against our own, our own uh, demons. It is a way for us to compare what it is we're doing against certain principles that ha ha hath shown, that have shown uh, their mettle you know, over time. If you respect these, you stand a very good chance of not devolving into tyranny. You stand a very good chance of not devolving in, into some kind of despotism. You, you have a very good chance of being a good and just society, but you must, you must abide by them, and you must call a spade a spade whenever there is a, a usurpation of them or a deviation from them. You must have those debates, because if you don't have those debates to rectify those problems and those variances from these principles, what you will have is another bloody war, which we're very good at waging. We are a country that is absolutely wonderful at killing. We do a very good job of killing people, despite all these wonderful principles that we write down. So this is the vaccine against that. But it is not a vaccine that you take once and it works for all time. You have to constantly uh, be vigilant in making sure that your titer count is kept good. You've got to be a jealous guardian of these liberties because they are the distinction between the ochlocracy and a democracy, between a just society and mob rule. Have a great day.